Neville Brody, a graphic designer who took ordinary to the extraordinary. Brody is an English designer who attended multiple art schools in his lifetime, but more notably known for attending the London College of Communication. Throughout his uni experience, Neville was always challenging art, and because of that, professors claimed that his work was uncommercial and didn't fit the art style at the time, which meant that he would never make it in the industry. Ironically, he holds the title of being the Dean of the School of Communication at the Royal College of Art in London. So what did Neville do that didn't suffice in art school? Well, he brought exploration, innovation, and experimentation. During his time in uni, the rise of pop art and punk began. As a fine artist, he was in love with these unique styles. His work was inspired by Dada, Futurism, Constructivism, and even punk rock. Many of his influences share similar ideals of being anarchic and breaking the rules of traditional art. During a time of lithographic innovation, Brody wanted to incorporate and combine typefaces into his designs. He pushed the limits of typography and expanded the way we viewed words. Instead of seeing them as text, Brody saw them as elements of illustration, another form of visual art. He started making his own typefaces, such as Insignia, Industria, Tokyo, and even Gothic. By doing so, Brody inspired many other artists to follow his lead, opening a new pathway for typography art. With this uncommercial style, Brody was able to make a name out of himself, being different and unconventional, led him to being the art director of The Face Magazine, Arena Magazine, Lay Magazine, and City Limits. His claim to fame came from following his passion believing in his style, and breaking the rules of traditional art. Free Me From Freedom by Brody came out not too long ago in 2008. The idea behind this poster was to call out the irony of living in a world of freedom, but everywhere we walked, there were security cams watching us. From the poster, we can depict multiple elements and principles of design. Brody uses a right aligned set of text that bleeds off the right edge of the poster. The black background illuminates the color letter forms, which creates a simple contrast, allowing for little visual noise. The weight of the type is very bold and prominent. It is the hierarchy of the poster. The words Disprotect Me by Any Means Necessary is seen on the left side written in all lowercase type and rotated to its side. This creates that contrast between the words but still enhances the overall message of the poster. Then we see a body of white text next to the word me. The implementation of the body was to create a sense of balance and unity. It fills in that negative space so that the area wouldn't cause any disconnect from the other words. What grabs the viewer's attention is the bright colors. No one would notice this poster if Brody didn't use colorful words. It makes the poster more dynamic, more interesting to look at, and that's what's important. It carries meaning without being very chaotic or causing outrage. Here are some similar styles of work that Brody has done. Following the same idea of having a bold typeface that contrasts against the background, and is being supported by smaller type. Now these posters might be familiar. The Ocean's 11 and 12 posters were designed by Brody in 2001 and 2004. Movie posters are meant to encapsulate the movie into one quick visual, be able to promote the movie and the genre in one look. So what do we know about the movie from just looking at the poster? Well, the black, white, a red colour scheme gives off a spy mission feeling. The black and white represents the sophistication, the elegance, purity, and secretive, while the red emits murder, danger, and even passion. The hierarchy of the posters are the giant numbers in the background. They're big, bold, and contrasted against the white. By having the numbers skewed and stretched, it creates a sense of movement. The silhouettes of the people walking over the numbers adds to that movement, but also establishes a depth of space. Brody even designed the sans serif font used in the poster. This font lends itself to being slicker, cleaner, and even modernizing, which perfectly fits the situation and genre of the film. 
The all caps of the actors' names highlights their importance, while the subscripts underneath represents the movie roles. And that is Neville Brogy, a designer who changed the way we view typography and expanded the ways artists can implement them into works of art. In an interview with Fuse magazine, Neville said that in order to produce good work, one must be aware of one's intention and have a clear purpose on what is being created. And that is something very important to think about the next time you begin your next project. Do a little research, try out every possible solution you can think of, and have a plan. Know who you're designing for and who's going to see your designs. All of these objectives are a good key to becoming a great designer. And maybe, just maybe, ladies and gentlemen, you may become the next Neville Brody.